gloomy day here in Charlotte, North Carolina, but we are cozy inside of 1319 Meadow Lane. Originally 950 square feet. We ended up putting addition on the back, getting it to over 1700 square feet, three bed, two bath. So this house is already sold. So if you come along right now, we can do it before we have to get out of here. This is our first house that we've done next to a house that we previously did. We had the luxury of finding out about this listing before it actually came on the market and there was a sign and I ended up trying to call a realtor and finally negotiated something. I think they put it on the market for like a day or whatever, but we, we had already won it by then. This house was originally built in the 1950s and was about 850, 900 square feet. Process is we get in, we demo the entire house on the inside, see what areas need some fixing. And so for this house in particular, we noticed that the floors were extremely unlevel. I think these are just old joists. These two by eights were overspanned by about a foot. So we think that could be a reason, one of the main reasons why. So being that it's a two by eight band, we're gonna have to, we'll go back in with two by eights, but we'll space them closer to give us the correct allowance for span, prevent sagging in the future. Hopefully with all this, we can correct how unlevel the floors were. It was a process, uh, even with doing the slab and replacing oh, floor joists <laughs> and trying to line everything up perfectly where they meet. That entailed uh, a whole lot of work though. Yeah. Uh, after that slab is there, it's, it's really there. And... We are in the addition area now. I'm standing kind of where the exit to our deck is gonna be. It's gonna be a water heater drain, washer dryer drain over there. It's gonna be a hallway that leads into your kitchen dining area. This little bump out is what we're doing for the dining space. So you can see how wide it is. You can really accommodate a nice uh, table in that area. So we're excited to get this one poured and framed uh, starting next week and get it to roughs. It's a six month project. We didn't have delays. It's going to live well, and you can kind of tell during the construction process, even before drywall's up, yeah. whether it's like going to yeah, live well. It's gonna be cramped uh, Smoothest finish ever, and having an, an inspection report of a remodel that had maybe six items, that, that says a lot. Some houses, we got better feelings than others, and this one was just one that we all were like excited about. When you're next door to a house that you flipped, you're kind of like, what can we do to make this house stand out? What kind of different designs are we gonna do? What kind of colors? So windows, we did black outside, white inside. In the meadow next door to us, it was white outside, white inside. We changed up the gable design, which I think was really cool. I made a mistake by giving that gable design a little bit too late. So we had to do like engineering in the front part because I had, I think, a different vision and then the vision changed, but it looks awesome. And we ended up doing like a greige stain to it. I'm usually like doing the quiet chamois. Like, let's change it up a little bit, make it lighter. This neighborhood, you can be a little bold. So why not do the orange door? Orange and blue, it's the gators. So we're here for it. Quiet on set. Hey guys, so as you're coming in, you're gonna notice a lot of similar elements to our flip next door, but we also did some really crucial differences in this house and uh, definitely wanna highlight those and show how a little bit of change made the layout completely different. So when you walk in, you have a living room to your right. Mainly we wanted that just to be like really nice wide open space and then uh, windows kind of surrounding the TV area. I think we executed that very well. Really wanted to make sure the TV has its spot. Where we really made the change was back here in the kitchen. You're gonna see a small little bump out right here to the right. That is a specific difference from the previous floor plan where the dining room was actually just kind of in plane with this wall. We have two lights that actually weren't meant for the specific house at 3315 Draper. I made a couple mistakes with the lighting. This light was actually the original foyer light um, when you walked in from the front door. It ended up being too low. As you can see, like I already hit it. We just made a quick swap over here, put in the dining room. It fits perfectly with the black and gold tones that we have throughout the house. It allowed us to have a full-size kitchen. I mean, this is like one of the largest kitchens that we've ever done to date, and it's in, what, a 1,700 plus square foot house. It's perfect for hosting, and I don't think anyone would expect it, like, until you walk in this house. 
My favorite feature here is the huge island. This measures five feet by eight feet. And it's kind of funny because this was an accident. I had told the countertop people that we were gonna go 15 inches over the back of the island. And they went 15 inches beyond the little two extensions there and ended up being one that's better for entertainment. It doesn't overpower any of the other space here. Coming from a design perspective, I probably would have put some open shelving next to the fridge to allow you to put some glasses, some dinnerware, servingware that looks cool. But these future homeowners have ample of storage space here. So we're sticking to the grays that we've been doing in the past couple houses just to kind of match the Niagara quartz that we have. Our kitchen island and our hood event color are both the Sherwin-Williams repost gray at 75%. I think I've probably used it in the past like five houses. I think it's a very subtle color that helps complement our wood. We know we always like to mix the metals up. So underneath the kitchen pendants, you'll have a little gold tone to help with the rest of the house and the golds. Coming back this way, we ended up extending out this wall so we could dead end our cabinets in from that side. And then one of the key things from people is always making sure to have the beverage fridge. So we were able to get the full base because you need 24 inch depth to be able to get one of these. And then just off to my left is gonna be a really nice full size pantry. Pushing down this hallway, on my left right here, you have typical laundry room, but it's nice size and it's got a really nice neutral gray, one foot by two foot brick tile. And right here, we were able to squeeze in a drop zone uh, right before you get to the door uh, leading outside to the deck. Once you enter the living room, to your right is the hallway that leads into the other bedrooms and also our guest bathroom. In the guest bathroom, we have some mixed metals again, some black and golds. Then we have our white subway tile that we usually put in our guest bathrooms. This one's a little bit different because it's actually four by 16. We're usually using three by 12, so that means more grout lines. This one's a little bit more clear defined, especially because we are using a charcoal grout, which also matches our bathroom floor as well. So coming down the hallway, we have another bedroom. I really like this bedroom because we have two double buy hinge doors that allow you to have a lot more closet space than like we're usually used to with our houses, especially like if you have a girl, like they're gonna need a lot of closet space, right? And then the very back is our master bedroom. So something that we really pride ourselves in is our additions that we do. You know, we started off that way, originally flipping houses. And so we'd always try to make our master as part of our addition. Now let's go take a look at the bathroom. This master bathroom is more spacious than our addition rooms. So you'll see that we have the 24 by 48 tile in the master bathroom. You might think that you've seen it before in Palm or 3509 Draper. It is the same exact tile. However, this is polished. We've always used matte in the usual flips that we have. I really liked it because it complements our penny mosaic tile at the same time. And we have a really good tile guy now. So when he's putting the grout in between the penny mosaic, it's all just seamless. There's no bumps or waviness at all. And we have a 72 inch vanity here. They messed up a little bit and they gave us two 36 inch bases and then we had to fit drawers in between that. So it's a little bit different, but it still works out because there are drawer spaces for your partner. We use the same Niagara quartz that we did in the kitchen. If we're able to throw quartz, guys, sometimes we'll be able to get a remnant piece. With budgets here, I was like, let's just go with the natural Niagara, so it's all free flowing from every single room in the house. And then right behind me, you get a walk-in master closet too. And they should. Uh, that's great. <laughs> All right, so this backyard, not the largest one ever, but it did have a few trees. It had one tree that was in the way of the new addition, so we had to get that one out of there. Decided to keep that other tree. It's a little close to the house. One of the things in the buyer's inspection was to trim this up just a little further, but what we didn't want to do was eliminate all trees from the lot and just have a you know, blank, flat backyard. We were able to squeeze a nice little deck in here. It is nice because it's nice and low. Um, we don't have steps coming off, railings, so you get to enjoy every every inch of the deck. And yeah, cute, cute little backyard. When you have an under 1,800 square foot house, you know, like Wyndham, Kilbourne, other Wyndham, 
other meadow. We always walk in there and like, oh, we wish we added a closet here. We wish we did this. This house has it all. Like you have a coat closet, you have a walk-in pantry, you have a linen closet right outside of your guest bathroom. Then you have a decently sized closet in the guest bedroom. And then you have your master bathroom, which is a double vanity. And then you have a master closet walk-in. So you're never really gonna be worried about where to put things, especially because you have like all these uppers behind us. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to check out any of those other projects I just mentioned, make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube page. If you haven't checked us out yet, we're also on Instagram at QC Flippers. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Oh, shit, we gotta go. Oh, crap. Oh. <laughs>